Uh, our next speaker is uh, Sam Wong, and he's going to talk about faster rheumatoid intersection. Uh, thank you. Um, can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, so, uh, welcome. Um, so today I'm going to talk about faster, fast algorithms for mutual intersection. Um, this is joint work with Depola, Inter, Erwan, and Sahil, um, some of whom are in the audience today. So um, let me remind you what matrix are. So um, matrix are essentially independent subsets of a frame, of a one set V, um, and the independent sets satisfy two conditions. Uh, condition one: uh, you want any um, subset of an independent set to also be independent. Uh, condition two is about making an independent set bigger. So you will have two different independent sets. You can move an element from the bigger one to the smaller one, so that the smaller one with that new element is still independent. So standard definition, um, there are many examples of matrix. Uh, here we give two. So linear matrix, which is just um, the set of um, li linearly independent vectors. And uh, in combinatorics, we have this graphic matrix, which is just a set of a quick subgraph of a given graph. And the matrix intersection problem that we study today is about finding a common independent set. Um, so if you have two matrix M1 and M2, uh, which are over the same uh, ground set, uh, you, we like to find a common independent set. So a set that is independent for both M1 and M2. And furthermore, we like to um, maximize the size of this um, common independent set. So a famous example of that would be bipartite matching, which is a special case of mutual intersection. Okay. Well, um, in general, uh, matrix are these um, abstract objects uh, without any succinct representation. So if you want to study actually any kind of matrix problem computationally, you better have some sort of model to interact with the matrix. And arguably the most standard and natural model is the independence oracle. So under this model, um, whenever you have an independent set, the oracle tells you whether it's independent or not. So, and uh, we will denote the running time of such an oracle by T. Uh, our paper also studies a different model, but for the purpose of this talk, uh, we won't be going over that today. Okay, so uh, for this talk, I'm going to denote the size of our ground set, ground set by N, and R is going to be the size of the final solution. So it's like the size of the maximum matrix intersection. Uh, we will study both exact and approximate algorithms for the problem. Uh, and both of our algorithms are actually inspired by the famous shortest augmenting path algorithm, which was um, due to Edmonds in the 60s. So for the exact algorithm, uh, it's essentially a faster implementation of um, this SAP algorithm. Uh, our running time is n l, roughly n l. Um, it's better than the previous n l to 1.5 due to Cunningham. And I should also mention that um, there's an independent work by Guren which achieves a similar running time. So on the other hand, uh, for the approximate regime, uh, we don't get a strict improvement, but we get uh, the first subquadratic time algorithm. Our algorithm runs in time n to 1.5. So it's better than the current best of NL uh, for small n. Uh, this is actually the number of oracle calls, but I try to keep um, the running time clean. Uh, I'm rated. Um, that's a good open question. So uh, again, um, just as I mentioned, our algorithms are also based on this um, set algorithms. Um, and we give a faster implementation using um, two ideas. So we use um, this binary search idea, and uh, we also use a potential function uh, argument to do an amortized analysis of the running time. Um, so matrix intercession has a long line of history. Um, the first algorithm um, 
was given by the man uh, who is over there. <laughs> so it's a. <laughs> so uh, Edmonds um, gave the first polynomial time algorithm for the problem, and the one in time is n r square with the t, which is the number of oracle calls. Uh, subsequently, the first improvement came only about 18 years after. So it's still SEP, uh, but we do that in phases. So by doing that, you can get better one in time of n out to 1.5. And there was basically no improvement in this model until four years um, before um, by, an, by an, an important paper, uh, which uses the cut and plane method to get uh, Sub, uh, quadratic oracle complexity, but um, there's a quick one in time overhead. So a natural question would be whether we can do better, um, whether we can have an algorithm that simultaneously does better than both of them. And we answer that question in the affirmative. So we give an algorithm that runs in roughly n out time. So again, uh, our algorithm uses two ideas, binary search and potential function to get the desired and our time algorithm. Um, so just to, so there, so probably the most famous augmenting path type algorithm is for matching. Um, so for bipartite matching, um, you will find a path that alternates between matched and matched edges. And um, once you find such a path, you can uh, make the, um, mesh edges are meshed and vice versa. And by doing that, you eventually get a maximum matching. So um, matrix intersection is similar and it's probably not too surprising because um, it's a generalization of bipartite matching. But there are a few differences. So first, we don't have a graph for matrix. So I need to tell you how to define a graph. So for any solution S, which is a common, um, which is a common independent set. Uh, you can construct, construct the exchange graph as follows. So you put S on the left hand side, and you put the vertices not in, not in S on the right. Um, you have edges between A and B. If you can swap A for B, and still preserve independence, depending on whether it's for M1 or M2, um, you can go up, go in either direction. Uh, we also have um, two special types of vertices, um, sources and sync. Um, these are vertices that you can add to your current solution S and still preserve independence. And again, depending on whether it's M1 or M2, you call that sync or sources. Okay. Just one set, there's some technical difficulty. Um, no, I think he may try to connect. Yeah, he wasn't responding, sorry. Okay, you come, you come back. Okay, so uh, we do, so once you, so um, here for metro intersection, um, there's a key difference. So you cannot just do any type of augmentation like by part time matching. Instead, you want your augmentation to be along shortest augmenting path uh, from a source to a sink. Uh, once you have such a path, you, you take out all the left vertices on the path and replace them with the white vertices on the path. So in this example, we have a path from um, B0, A1, all the way up to B3, and you, you add 
uh, you insert all the Bs and remove all the As. And the key property um, is that if you do that, um, this, is going to be, this is going to preserve independence for both of the two matrix. Well, um, our final matrix size will have L, so you just have to do that for L augmentations to get to the um, final solution. So here's a very simple um, analysis of the running time of this algorithm. First, in each iteration, um, in each augmentation, you have to construct your exchange graph. Uh, in the worst case, that can be n l cores because you have n l such pairs, and you have r augmentations, so that comes out to be n l squared in total. So can we do better? Uh, one natural idea is to use um, this algorithm for um, matching um, Hockhoff club. So instead of doing uh, one augmentation at a time, you would do um, them in phases. So in this phase, you would do augmentation um, for paths of the same length. Um, so in a sense, you're kind of doing augmentation in parallel. So the question is if we can do something similar for matching, I mean for uh, matroid. Um, the answer is yes and no. So in general, for matroid, uh, in, the, in this example, even for matching, uh, if you do two augmentations, um, it doesn't quite work because it doesn't preserve independence. So in this case, um, if you if you, if you are met along both of these two paths, uh, it wouldn't give you a matching. Um, but Cunningham, amazingly, he still managed to pull off a partial solution. So he doesn't quite do it in parallel, he does it sequentially, but um, he's, he was still able to get an improvement. Um, so his algorithm one in, once in um, scored R phases, and the running time per phase is still N L, the time to construct your exchange graph. So the total running time is N L to 1.5. So, uh, and here we, ran, we run into this barrier. So bo for, for both Edmonds and Cunningham's result, uh, we have this um, N L time, which we need to spend in order to compute the exchange graph. And our final target is to do N L time. So can we actually achieve that? So here's the observation. So we, what we actually care about is the path. We don't, we don't necessarily care about the graph. And uh, it may be possible to actually compute such a path without lowering the entire graph. And we do that using a BFS style algorithm. So as a BFS algorithm, uh, we are going to incrementally compute uh, what we call the distance sets, um, di, which are just the vertices at distance i. And to perform such a procedure, um, you have to go from left to right or right to left because your, your graph is bipartite. Um, and you, we want to do that efficiently without knowing all the edges. So initially, that's easy because by definition, the sources are just D0. But what about after? So specifically, if we are given all the um, distance until the eyes, how do you compute the next one? Um, there are two cases. Uh, either you go from right to left and, or left to right. And depending on which case you are in, uh, we, have, we have two different um, techniques to handle it. So for going to go from right to left, uh, we'll use a very simple binary search trick to do it. Um, on the other hand, you want to go from right to left, uh, we'll do this um, potential function argument um, for an amortized analysis of the running time. Um, the, the key point is that both of them will rough, run in roughly an hour time. Um, or because you have n vertices and r augmentations, so it's roughly constant time per vertex per augmentation. So let's do it for right to left first, uh, which where we use the binary search idea. So um, it's not quite the algorithm, but it contains most of the key ideas. So in this simplified picture, uh, we have a vertex B, and we like to find and S um, going from B to some, to some A on the left-hand side. So how do you do that? Naively, you can iterate over all the left vertices, and that's going to be linear time. So that's not good. Well, instead, you can do this binary search. So instead of um, iterating over all the A, you first divide your left-hand side into two parts, uh, S1 and S2, which is a partition. 
and you check whether you know you can add B to S1 and still preserve independence. If you can do that, you just recurse on S2 and um, make your set bigger. Uh, otherwise, you do it for the other set. Well, it's a binary search procedure, so you only need a lot number of calls. Um, so that's how you go from right to left. On the other hand, you will want to go from left to right. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky. So uh, here we use this um, monotonicity lemma by Cunningham. So he, he says that um, the distances are always monotone. And naturally, um, this suggests um, using the distance lower bound as a potential function. So our potential function analysis goes as follows. So we have, we will spend roughly constant time to certify that B is in our, in, you know, the target um, DI plus one, which is the set that we want to compute next. Well, if it's not in DI plus one, because distance is a monotone, we know that um, B has to be in DI plus three or higher. So we can increase the distance lower bound of B by two. So roughly we spend constant time per unit of um, distance lower bound. And since, well, distances cannot be more than two hours, right? Because like, any path going from the source to the sink can only go through our vertices on the left. So um, the total time you spend per vertex is amortized um, n hour time, I mean hour time. And since you have n vertices, the total comes out to be n hour time, which is exactly what we want. So to summarize, uh, we used two ideas to discover the edges, um, binary search to go from right to left, and potential function analysis, analysis to go um, the other way, and both of them require an hour time. So that's the part one of my talk. I try to make up the time by going through part two faster. So bear with me for a second. Um, so. Yeah, we also studied the problem um, in the approximate regime. So here we are interested in one minus epsilon approximate solution. So solutions which are approximately optimal. Um, so our algorithm is once in n out to a one point n to a one point five time, and uh, for small n is an improvement over the current one, uh, n out time algorithm, and we have this augmenting set algorithm. Um, idea and is actually a generalization of the shortest path algorithm. So uh, back to Hopkoff Cup. Um, so here, so just to recall, we have that very simple algorithm that does only one augmentation at a time. But we kind of said that, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't do that because like, it might not preserve independence for a choice. And in particular, actually, there's an our example show that even you know if you have two such um, paths, and you you may not still you still may not preserve independence. So we need something new. So uh, we propose this idea or this concept of augmenting sex um, to uh, rescue. So it's it's very similar to augmenting path. Um, it actually generalizes augmenting path. So um, let's just take a step back and see uh, what augmenting path means. So you have a path going from um, D0 all the way up to BK. Well, the second line is kind of dumb, but um, bear with me for a second. Um, you'll be obvious why I do that. Um, here we require B, the first vertex to be a source, and we require the final vertex to be a sink. And as a shortest path, um, you know, the AIs and BJ is better in be in the corresponding distance set. So that's the here. And we have, you know, the uh, swap condition which says that these are actually, these are indeed um, edges of the graph. And finally, um, the correctness of the algorithm hinges on the fact that um, doing this augmentation will, will preserve independence. So what is augmenting set? Yeah, it's almost the same except that you change um, the small a to big A and small b to big B. So these are sets of the same size um, with exactly the same conditions. And um, surprisingly, you still have, um, you still preserve independence. 
if you do that augmentation. So um, this is probably my favorite result from the paper. Um, it's not an algorithmic result, but I find that to be pretty nice structurally. So you can actually show that um, this is like a succinct represent representation of the set algorithm. So you can show that um, you can show that um, such a sequence of um, BIs and AIs, they form an omnipotent set, if and only if it is the consecutive, it is the union of um, the same number of consecutive um, number of set operations. So that's the key result um, underlying the correlates of the algorithm. So our algorithm, so with that in mind, um, our algorithm um, is still, there's still quite a bit of work, but uh, at the high level, uh, it, go it goes through the following um, idea. So first we want to, so with that result, you know, we want to um, find a bigger and bigger augmenting set, in, probably incrementally. So this, this is what we do. So we find a, we incrementally um, make our set, augmenting set bigger. And once it's big enough, uh, you will switch to shortest augmenting path. So the final algorithm is kind of a hybrid between um, augmenting path and augmenting set algorithm. And um, we achieve this um, subquadratic time um, guarantee. So just to conclude, uh, we have concluded, we have given a new augmenting set algorithm for matrix intersection and um, for approximate matrix intersection and a natural question is whether you can do better. Um, and as a new algorithm, well, we only use, we only use that for the um, approximate algorithm, but can we also do that for exact? And finally, um, there's currently there's like no non-trivial lower bound for major intersection. Can we do something about that? Thank you. We have time for a quick uh, question while uh, the next speaker uh, should start setting up. Yeah. Oh, Chuck. I have no question about this fine work. I'm hoping to get some people to uh, 